So listen, if you want to choose a college degree that's going to lead to a high paying job and a fulfilling career, it's not a matter of following your passion. Instead, you should focus on going where the opportunity is and solving other people's problems. And you do this to be valuable to your tribe, which in the modern world is the people around you, AKA your community. But with that being said, if you're bad at math or you don't like math, you definitely should not do a career that involves a lot of it. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the college degrees that don't require very much math, but still lead to high paying jobs. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is going to be in the medical field, which is what I chose to do. And the reason I know so much about this is because when I went to pharmacy school, it was actually connected to a different school that was nursing. And we ended up doing a bunch of different activities with the nurses and we ate lunch with them as well. And as long as you know how to do basic calculations and use a calculator, nursing is going to be okay for you if you're bad at math. And the majority of what you're going to learn is going to be science, clinical skills, and patient care. Now, nursing pays really well at about $69,000 a year, and this is just the entry level pay. You can make much more than that if you specialize. And it's growing at about 9% over the next 10 years, which is excellent. Now, another thing that's growing is the amount of people that are smashing the like button on all of my videos. And I really appreciate all of you that do that. Now, some of the pros of nursing are, for one, there's a ton of jobs. There are literally millions of nurses. There's many different specialties. And it's also one of the most secure jobs you could possibly get. So even if it was the end of the world, there would still be a ton of demand for nurses. Another great thing about nursing is because of the fact that there's so many jobs, there's a lot of different specialties that you can go into. So if for whatever reason you don't like your job, you can just do a different specialty and it's relatively easy easy to switch. It's also really easy to move up in a hospital as a nurse. A lot of the time, the leadership positions in a hospital like president, vice president, etc., are filled by nurses. And that makes sense because nobody knows a hospital better than a nurse. Some of the cons are that nursing can be extremely stressful. A lot of nursing jobs are very fast paced and there's a lot of pressure. But if you're the type of person who likes to be really busy while you're at work, nursing can be good for you. It can also be emotionally draining. You know, depending on the specialty that you go into, you could be seeing people dying on a regular basis. And a lot of the time you are gonna be seeing people at their very worst. They're probably having one of the worst days of their life. There's also lots of responsibility. So the decisions that you make as a nurse can have massive consequences on other people's lives, both good or bad. And also the government can come in and make your life a living hell by doing a terrible job managing something like the whole <coughs> cough, cough situation. So there's that. Now, before I get into the next part, I just want to say really quickly that a lot of the college degrees that, you know, school counselors and maybe your teachers recommend are actually really bad. But the next one on the list is going to be a modern degree that's insanely useful. And this is a degree that combines business skills with technology skills with an emphasis on data. And one thing I've talked about on this channel quite a bit is the fact that data is more valuable than oil or gold. And the way big social media companies have been collecting our data is actually extremely messed up and they pretty much got clean away with it, but that's a topic for another video. But if you think about it, data being extremely valuable makes complete sense. So let me use an example. I personally am a huge fan of the Los Angeles Lakers. And let's say that organization spends a million dollars advertising their Lakers jersey to a bunch of random people, right? They have no idea if these people like basketball or they're Lakers fans versus spending a million dollars advertising to people who are diehard Lakers fans. Who do you think is going to end up making more money? Well, in the first case, they would probably spend a million dollars and end up losing like 900,000. And in the second case, they might spend a million dollars and end up making two or three million back. And that is the power of data. And that's one of the big reasons why the technology industry is one of the best industry that plebs like us can work in. And this degree, Management Information Systems, doesn't have too much math, but it's going to prepare you to go into that industry. Now, according to Glassdoor, at the entry level, Management Information Systems makes about $97,000 a year. And the job outlook over the next 10 years shows about 16% growth, which is excellent. But yeah, this one does require super basic mathematics knowledge, like you're gonna have to use a calculator and you're probably gonna have to know how to read basic spreadsheets. So for instance, you would need to know that a 150% ROI 
means for every $100 you're spending on a marketing campaign, you're getting $150 back, AKA $50 in profit. And according to Payscale, this is actually the top paying bachelor's degree for business degree graduates. So some of the pros of this one are there is a ton of jobs. This is something that basically every business and every industry is doing now, and they need people who are good with business and technology, especially those that have a focus on data. There's also a ton of different job choices. You can actually work in healthcare, finance, technology. There's many different industries and many different careers that you can work in. And there's a lot of chance for growth. So I think people who graduate with an MIS degree are going to be moving up within companies and having a lot of opportunities, maybe even outside of working in a business. So for instance, you could be starting your own business like Thomas Frank did. And if you don't know Thomas Frank, he's basically a legendary YouTuber in the productivity space. He got an MIS degree and he was able to start a successful YouTube channel. And now he makes seven figures a year with his YouTube channel as well as his businesses. Now, some of the cons are you need to be very good with technology. So this is one thing you are gonna have to be really good with tech. And another con is technology changes really quickly. So, you know, something that you learn now might be outdated in the next five to 10 years. So you have to be somebody who is willing to keep up to date on the latest changes. Now, the next one on the list does not require nearly as much technology skill, and it has a lot more to do with advertising. And by 2025, it's projected that the worldwide per year spending on marketing is going to be 4.7 trillion dollars. And the problem is businesses have to have people who are really good at managing those marketing campaigns. And that's where you can come in with the next degree on the list, which is a marketing degree. So this one has very little to do with math and a lot more to do with creativity, persuasion, and understanding consumer behavior. Now there is a caveat to this one, which is the most valuable skill within marketing is digital marketing. And typically colleges don't cover this very much in their curriculum. So for instance, I've looked at lots of different colleges curriculum and they usually only have two to three classes on digital marketing. And digital marketing is all of the marketing that happens online. Whereas traditional marketing would be marketing where you see it on a billboard or maybe you see it on TV or on the radio. Now an entry level marketing position will probably bring somewhere around $66,000 a year. And marketing positions are expected to grow about 10% over the next 10 years according to BLS. And if you have trouble getting hired, you can always start a marketing campaign to hire yourself like Kelsey from Auburn did. She created a website called Hire Kelsey and she used social media marketing to promote it. And this approach gained attention from several different companies and she was able to secure a job offer. So some of the pros here are there is a wide variety of opportunities. You get to use your creativity, innovation and outside of the box thinking and there's good potential for career advancement. So a lot of the time marketing graduates will end up rising up through the ranks within a company. Some of the cons here are it can be highly competitive. It also requires really strong communication skills and it can be stressful and demanding, especially if you are running a marketing campaign that isn't profitable, right? So that can be highly stressful because you have to make sure the campaigns you're running are actually making the company money. And then of course, another con is getting a marketing degree, depending on what you're trying to go for, is not always going to be the best choice. So for instance, if you're trying to go into digital marketing, which has the most opportunity, getting a marketing degree is probably probably going to be a waste of your time. And I've actually interviewed a ton of different people on this channel about digital marketing, and my friend Seth has helped thousands of people get into it. And all the people that I've interviewed have gotten jobs using Seth's course, and he actually does have a free masterclass, which I'll put down in the description, as well as the pinned comment below. That'll go over the different types of digital marketing jobs and whether it's a good choice for you. Now, the next one on the list is going to be another medical-related degree, and it's not going to be at the bachelor's level. So with this degree, you can actually prescribe and diagnose, but you don't have to go to medical school and then go to a residency, which usually takes somewhere between 11 and 17 years. And that is going to be physician assistant studies. Now, this is typically going to be a master's level degree that takes about six years. And this is going to be focusing on patient care, diagnosis, and treatment rather than crunching numbers. You are still going to have to know some super basic math, like how to use a calculator and how to plug in things to basic equations, but it's not not gonna be using a lot of math and you can always just look it up online if you have to because there's calculators. Now with this one, you'll be making around $100,000 a year and it's projected to grow at 31% 
over the next 10 years, which is absolutely amazing. So some of the pros here is it has ridiculously high demand. Another pro is extremely competitive pay. It's also extremely stable like most health careers. And there's actually a lot of varied job opportunities, which is one of the weakness of health related careers. Because if you think about it, if you become a surgeon, for instance, it's very difficult if you decide you don't want to do surgery anymore, like you don't want to have to wake up in the middle of the night and do 12 hour surgeries to switch your specialty. You'd have to go back to residency do another three to five years probably just to switch but with physician assistant i've actually personally known people that have worked in multiple different specialties at once some of the cons here are the education is intense so there's not that much math but the education you have to go through is going to be really intense because you're going to be allowed to prescribe and diagnose and so they have to make sure that you know what you're doing and on that note another con is there's very high responsibility which can sometimes mean there's also really high levels of liability and then another con is it can be relatively high paced. So that can be a pro or a con depending on what you like. Now the next one on the list, in my opinion, is probably the easiest career that you can get into to break into the best industry, which is the technology industry, right? So I've recently interviewed people on this channel who've been able to get into this role in as little as 10 days. And the role I'm talking about is going to be information technology help desk. And the degree that you could get to get into this is going to be an information technology degree. And again, Again, this one does not require that much math. Now there's a lot of different rules you can go into. Uh, information technologist makes about $66,000 a year and information technology occupations are growing at 11% over the next 10 years according to BLS. Now my friend Josh who I've had on the channel before actually started off in information technology. Then he was able to rise up through those ranks, make really good money, get to the six figure level. Then he went to cybersecurity. So he was able to easily transition into a different career path. Then he was able to rise up through through that and make even more money. I think he was making like $250,000 a year at one point. And then he transitioned into software development where he is now at, and he was able to rise up through those ranks as well. So IT is a great place to get your foot in the door in the technology industry. And once you're in, it's really easy to transition into any career that you want to go into. Now, some of the pros here are there is a ton of jobs in IT. IT help desk is probably the easiest one to get your foot in the door, that first job that you land. But there are so many different paths and so many different jobs in IT that you can go down and you can easily make it to six figures within about three years. It's also really good pay. There's also a lot of different job choices. You can work in finance, health, technology, et cetera, right? There's need for IT people in just about every industry out there. And then it's also extremely flexible. There's many different remote work opportunities out there if that's what you'd like. Now, some of the cons here are that technology does change extremely fast. So you do need to be somebody who is both good with technology and you like to keep learning as you're career progresses. It also can be somewhat high pressure when something breaks down. So of course, modern businesses do rely on technology. And when that technology breaks down, they're kind of helpless. So there's going to be a ton of pressure on you to fix those things as fast as possible when that happens. But yeah, this is one of the ones that I've had the best experience of people being able to go from zero experience to getting a job in a very short period of time. And it's also great for getting a remote job, which is something that tons of people who watch my channel want to get. And I actually made an entire video breaking down all of the common remote jobs. And I rank them from S tier, which is the best to F tier, which is the worst. And you can check that out by clicking right here.